What is up, stock stars? In this video, I'm going to teach you how to use the new Mimic Creative Sampler from Reason. This is a really, really fun, useful sampler that I think is probably going to become my workhorse sampler. I also have Serato Sample. I also have uh, Logic. I have Machina. Uh, there's all these other samplers out there that I really like. They're also very powerful. But for 90% of, of what I want to do, I think Mimic is probably the place I'm going to go. Um, and that's why I wanted to make this tutorial to show you how to use it. Uh, we're going to go through the modes, the various stretch algorithms, some of the more advanced features. And if you stay tuned towards the very end, I'm going to give you two of my favorite tips for Mimic. So be sure to turn the like button up to 11. Be sure to subscribe so that the muses of music bless you. And let's watch that intro. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about, I'll just give you an overview of Mimic. So at the top, you can load the global patches. Um, here you can choose one of the four modes, which we're going to we'll dig into all of these sections deeper. But this is where a lot of the magic happens. This basically determines what style of sampling you're doing. In the slot selection area, you can drop in up to eight different samples or the same sample eight different times so that you can manipulate it differently. Right here, we've got the actual sample that's being used, and you can change the sample uh, being used by scrolling up and down, opening, or dragging a sample right into this area. It also lets you do things like uh, zoom into the area. I'm sorry. Zoom in, zoom out, trim the sample, that sort of thing. Here you can, and we'll get into this, but you can loop the end of the sample, set the root notes, then we get to the next major section of the Mimic Sampler. We come to the algorithm that's being used in each mode to manipulate the samples. Everything from tape stretch to granular synthesis. Um, and that lets you sort of dial in the exact right sound, and this is where most of the magic's gonna happen. If you are in slice mode, then the slices tool is gonna be really helpful. In just about any mode, these kind of four little sections here, the start position, the speed, and the pitch, and then just the, I guess, the playback mode, uh, or the polyphony, is going to be super essential for just getting that perfect sound, finding your perfect little bits of sample. Then you've got basically the standard array of LFO, modulation, amp, filters, and envelopes that you would see on most synthesizers, uh, and they let you further shape your sound. Finally, we've got a set of onboard effects that are really well designed to kind of do the typical sampling thing you might expect from a traditional sampler. So that's like the high level set of stuff. One other thing I want to note, if we flip it around, we've got some CV ins that can be routed to various things. Um, we've got, if you notice here, there's the eight different individual samples. You could route them to their own stereo outputs. You also could send these two effect sends out if you wanted to have samples going to certain things. And finally, you've got a lot of the useful shortcuts right here. So I'm not going to get into those shortcuts because all I have to do is hit tab and you can get them. Uh, before we go farther though, I do want to let you know I've got a free Reason mixing template. So if you're new to Reason, uh, this can really help you mix faster and better in Reason. There's a link down below to check it out. Oh, and another thing I want to let you know, uh, right now, I am under the impression that there is a promo code that will let you try Reason Plus and Mimic for three months for $3. So if you click the affiliate link down below, uh, you should be able to put in the code 333 and uh, hopefully the discount will apply. If it doesn't apply, then it means it's either not valid for your account, it's expired or something else. I don't know. I'm not lying about this being real, but it might not work for you. Your mileage may vary, but if you want to check out Mimic, do check out that link below. I think once you actually start playing with it, you'll really see that it's quite powerful. Okay, so now let's drop into the first major component of Mimic, which is the mode. Well, this determines basically what you're doing with the sampler. Are you manipulating it in terms of pitch? Are you slicing things up? Are you triggering multiple different samples or different parts of the same sample? Or are you kind of creating a cool layered hybrid instrument? So the first one is pitch, and I've dropped in a sample. You and me. You and me. You and me. 
And just so we can hear this a little bit clearer, we'll do this other sample actually that I've got in vocal mode and it just I think will be a little cleaner. Without that. And let's turn off this filter. Let's go again. Let's go again. Let's go again. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go again. So that lets you manipulate the pitch of the sample or even throw it up into chords and do all sorts of cool um, sampling stuff. And then we'll get into these various stretch algorithms in a minute. They are vitally essential to all modes, but especially essential for when you're doing the pitch manipulation. That's where it really the rubber hits the mode. So if you want to do pitch-based sampling, drop in your samples to the pinch, pitch mode um, and then start messing around with the algorithm. The next mode is the slice mode where every key on the keyboard, as you can see down here, you got a little map, can be assigned to a different slice of the sample. And you can change, you can either double click to automatically add in a marker and a new key, or you can reset all the slices and just use the sensitivity knob to automatically find various slices. So if we start it just a little farther back, we can actually drop in another one right at the beginning there. Turn up the gain just a little bit. Turn down the envelope so we hear everything as it starts. So this is great for those sorts of chops, slicing. You could throw a drum loop in and like isolate the kick and the snare, all sorts of fun stuff like that. Again, stretch mode is going to matter. Speed is going to matter. Pitch and all this other stuff is going to matter, but we're going to get to that in a second. This is, I think, a good place, though, to stop and talk about this loop option right here. You see this button loop? This basically determines what happens when you get to the end of a slice. Does it just end? Oops. Skip. 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 Or does it loop back on itself? And length basically has to do with how far back it loops. So you could even probably automate loop. Um, but if you're just doing it like in a more so that's a cool way to get effects and another thing that's really important for the slice mode is playthrough so this basically means if you play a note when you get to the end what happens well it just plays through the next slice let's go again let's go again again and and again and but it will always stop at this final marker here and if you turn it off and it just ends at that slice so this can be really helpful for triggering certain loops, certain phrases, if you want slices to overlap and things like that. Multi-slot is a very different mode where basically each sample acts as a slice. I've got a slice in sample two, and this is gonna be now triggered by C sharp, and I've got a sample in C, or in slot one, which is gonna be triggered by C1. Let's go, you and me. Let's, you, 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 let you, let's, let's, let you. Or simultaneously. Let's go again. And you could manipulate that, like, let's say I want to turn up the pitch of one of them. Let's you and me. Let's let you and me. Or if I wanted this you and me to start here instead. Let's go again. And this can be really helpful, especially if you have the same sample and you want to get little different bits and pieces of it. Uh, this can help you get there by just loading the same sample into different slots and selecting different start and end locations, and different pitches. So let's just roll this pitch back. Um, this is probably also a good time to just point out um, when you're in multi-slot mode, 
or really just in general, that um, the way that Mimic is selecting these samples is basically um, determined by the start position. And as you'll see when we get to the advanced tips at the end, right now it sounds simple, but you can start setting up sort of some complex modulations that evolve over time and could make this sound much more interesting. Um, so while it's this mode kind of sounds a little straightforward right now, over time it might evolve as you learn more advanced tips and as I show you a bit more. Um, another thing I want to show you that's both going to be important for multi-shot and for the next mode, which is multi-pitch mode, there is not a mixer built into Mimic. Instead, each one of these slots has its own parameters. These, all these buttons here are independent per, um, per slot, basically. I, I, well, I don't know if poly and mono are. Yes, everything is independent per slot. So uh, you need to dial it in each time, or you can have totally different settings each time. But to basically replicate a mixer, like if you want to get the volume of the two samples you know, the same or different, uh, you use the amp section and you can adjust the gain of each sample, or you could adjust the pan so one's on the left and one's on the right. Let's, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> We're in the totally wrong mode. Let's get you and me. Let's, let's, let you and me. And if we'll just hit that even harder. Let's get you and me. Let's get you and me. Let's go again. So uh, this is kind of how you can do that simply. Or we mentioned you've got the eight output slots and you could route these to mixer channels and just do it there. Uh, the final mode is multi-pitch. And in this mode, instead of slices being triggered by different notes, now everything is triggered at the same time. So uh, if I hit, I'm just gonna hit a single note here, but you're gonna notice it's gonna play both samples. Let's go again. And I've still got the pan in on the volume, so you can make hear that a little clearer, I think. Let's go again. Let's go again. Let's go, let's go. And I think probably there's a world at which you can create some really cool stuff, uh, but you probably, I don't know if you'll accidentally stumble into it. Let's just see if we do it like this, what might happen. Let's go again. Let's go again. That's not it. But um, I think with some intentionality, and some messing around. You can definitely create some cool patches. And this is an area where I'm really looking forward to um, experimenting more. So those are the main modes in this lovely little thing called Mimic. Now I wanna talk about the stretch algorithms. Um, and so basically the stretch is then, now that you've got a sample, how does Mimic manipulate it, specifically in terms of pitch, speeding it up and slowing it down? So in a typical scenario, the way pitch things usually work or traditionally worked in an analog era was to make something higher pitched, you would speed up the tape that was playing it back and to make it slower pitched, you'd slow it down. We've all seen this a million times, especially if you've had like a record player or a cassette player that's really bad and it starts to wobble around, pitch goes up, pitch goes down. So you have the option of doing that. And this is the way most samplers and reason have worked traditionally. You and me. So if I hit a high note, you know it's chip monkey and very fast. And if I hit a low note, it's slow and... And that's very low. Uh, so that's one way of doing it. And then especially if you're trying to hit a chord, you're gonna have it run into a problem where they all play at different rates. And so your chord does this really weird sustain thing. But now there are ways to get around that. So the first algorithm is advanced, which basically, as I understand it, is just a pitch shifting tool that is that allows you to do uh, speed and pitch independently of each other. Um, and you have the option of preserving the transients, which means as it's maneuver manipulating things, you'll hear the like tran well, there are the peaks here, which where there's the most quick little energy or you can turn it off and you'll get different results each way. I don't think either of these samples that I'm using here, unfortunately, have a lot of transient energy. So you're not gonna see much of a difference, but this could really be important for like percussion loops and stuff. So now let's just listen to how 
The sample performs differently in advanced stretch mode. You and me. You and me. Let's turn off preserve transients. And I think for this, it behaves better without preserve transients on. You can hear this is a much cleaner algorithm for stretching this out. It's still not as clean as could be, but that's why we've got other algorithms. Um, I want to, well, we'll get into this in the next section about these more detailed controls, but you can slow it back down if you want, or you can change the pitch or whatever and impose a little bit of more control. But I just want to cover the algorithms right now. Uh, next is melody mode, which is much better for like leads or melodic lines. So now let's hear this. You and me, 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 uh, and so that you can hear, and I'm just going to turn the overall gain down a little bit since we might be clipping here. There's a cool little weird like effect there at the end. Uh, you could sample it again and then try and do some fun stuff with that. Listen again. Weird and fun stuff happens with Mimic. It is a very, I think it's a very fun sampling tool. If you didn't want that to happen, it might not be a good thing though, if you're looking for a straightforward sampler. Vocal mode is much more designed. It intelligently analyzes things in a way that uh, preserves vocal sounds more. And you can also use a built-in formant filter to preserve vocal details. You and me, you and me, you and me, you and me. Do you hear how much clearer that is for voice? Like if this was a guitar or something, melody mode would probably work cleaner. But for vocals, vocal mode tends to work the best. But you don't always want it to sound like a vocal. You and you and you and you and you and me. You and me. You and me. You 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 and me. You and me. You and me. You and me. You you and you. So that sounds really good. It sounds clear and crisp all along. We also have the formant filter. If you know you're gonna go. This basically can make it more intelligible if you know you're going to go and transpose a lot. So you and me. I think it's, I usually think it's clear if you go in the opposite direction. So if you're going to be playing lower notes, you boost the format. If you're going to be playing higher notes, you reduce the format. Form, format. You and me. 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 And if we go in the other direction. You and me. You and me, 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 and you just gotta experiment with what it's gonna be like. Um, it depends on how much chipmunkiness or how much Barry White you want in there. Uh, this is a really cool feature, fixed pitch. Basically, right? If you look at these melodies, the, the melody is like you, you and me. Whatever, I can't sing, but there's a lot of notes in there. With fixed pitch, what it does is it strips out all of the built-in melodic content of the uh, sample, and it just forces it to whatever note you're holding down. So this can be really good for chords, especially, or for just cool, like, vocador, almost type effects. You and me. You hear how that's much flatter? You and me. You and me. You and me. And then if we were to hit a chord... You and me. Pretty cool. Uh, and that can also do really weird, th like weird and cool things on percussive effects or on much more complicated source material, like where you've got like already a chord or an orchestral thing, layers. It's really cool for uh, and unpredictable in a good way. Finally, we've got granular. And this is basically a lot like the grain uh, synthesizer that's already in Reason. It's all the main key effects. And in pitch mode, it's not really going to behave much differently. A little more jitter, a little more spread, a little more overlap, a little less length. You and me. 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 You and me.
But this can come in handy more if you're in slice mode, which the grain, grain doesn't have. And let's just turn some of this off. And these other modes work too, so. Which probably brings us to the next logical point. Let's talk about playback modes. Uh, let's go to the other sample because this is just longer and there's more going on here. So if we play a note. Let's go again. And let's pan it back to the middle. Let's go again. Uh, first of all, over here we have smart position. So uh, first you can just do reverse. Which can be really fun. Uh, next you can just have the start position, which by default, like especially if you've got multiple samples layered together, you could do global position. So they all start and stop kind of at the same spot. Or you could have the start time. Uh, you could also have it slap to snipe, slap, snap to slices. Let's go again. Let's go again. Which is fun. And then you've got the mod matrix here, which can adjust the start time. Uh, for example, by being modified by any of these things, but let's just use this LFO here now. Let's go again. We'll set this up a lot. So I'm place it, playing the same note over and over again, but it is starting at different spots because of this LFO. And because I've got slap snap to slices on it's doing it at the slice points those are the only places it can start it's just choosing between them if i were to turn it off then it would be able to start anywhere randomly and sometimes it's triggering spaces without any volume which is why snap to slices can be really helpful and if we were to change the waveform and the speed let's say So that can be a really cool way of kind of messing with the sound. Also, random can be very fun. If we were to turn a loop on. Uh, I guess it doesn't randomly trigger the loop points. I thought it did, but uh, and no worries there. The next thing is the speed through which you play through the sample. Now, we've already talked about how it can be uh, independent of these algorithms, uh, anything basically uh, aside from tape, but you can now use this to speed up and slow down your playback. Let's go again. And depending on your algorithm, this will also change how it what happens when you slow it down. Let's go again. Like we're not really losing pitch there. Let's go again. 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 Let's 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 go again. Uh again this can be modified and you know let's modify it by the LFO again. Switch it up. Let's go again. We're speeding up and slowing down which is just Depraved. Let's go again. Let's switch mode. Let's go again. Let's go again. And if we were in slice mode. Let's go again. 
uh, you're going to get like some cool glitches and stuff. So there's the speed, and it can be modified in all sorts of cool ways. Let's go again. Let's go again. Let's go again. It can be really helpful. Separately, you could also just adjust the pitch without adjusting the speed. This is really helpful, especially if your sample isn't in the right key of your song. You can just, boop, you know, tune it down a few pitch, a few semitones to get it where you want. Or you could do depraved things like setting the LFO to modulate it. Let's go again. Let's go again. Let's go again. Let's go again. Which is pretty fun. Um, finally, and really importantly, uh, you've got the trigger mode here, which is basically poly, which means you can play chords. Let's go again. Mono trigger, meaning you can only play one note at a time. Let's go. Let's go again. Let's go again. Let's go again. Or mono legato, where there's sort of a slur between individual notes. Let's go again. Let's go again. Let's go again. Especially if you don't take your finger off, it doesn't automatically kill the other one. Let's go again. Let's go. Let's go again. Let's let's go again. 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 Let's go. Um, and this is really useful, especially in slice mode, where you're probably gonna want to be frequently in mono retrigger, so that. It'll tr like end right when you want it if you're doing into those tight chops. Whereas if you were in poly mode, they would sort of play through. But the other, but the cool thing about poly mode, if you're in slice mode, is that you can select multiple slices at once. So if you've got like a drum loop, you could have like multiple kicks and you could select them all simultaneously to make it hit a little harder if that's what you want it to do. So those are the main kind of controls for shaping how the sample is played back once you've got the algorithm going. I'm not going to spend really any time talking about the LFO, the amp, the filter, and the filter and amp envelopes. These are common throughout all Reason devices throughout basically most synthesizers in the world. Uh, you can just look up how to do it if you want to know more about them. They behave exactly like you would expect on a Reason device. Um, so they're really important to know how to use. If you want to take you know your music creation to the next level, you need to know how to use filters and amps and filter and amp envelopes and LFOs and things like that but there's nothing unique going on here in Mimic. So uh, we'll just step along past that uh, and talk about some of these built-in onboard effects. So you've got this compressor here, which is a very colorful and characterful compressor. It does not you like create the type of compression that you would want to have for like <laughs> your average drum track, but if you're doing sampled music, it is very much in line with the type of compression that you would have seen in sort of old school sampled music, really just over compressed stuff. Uh, let's just do fewer slices so we can really hear this. Let's go, let's go again, let's go again, let's go again, again. Uh, and actually, why don't I load in just a drum sample? So now we've loaded in a drum loop. And in melody mode, that's not sounding very good, but if we just go to advanced mode and preserve transients, let's first do mono legato. Um, and let us boost the envelope a little bit, turn off the compression, And just turn up the volume a little bit to gain stage this a little bit. 
This is already a super compressed. This drum here is basically a sampled drum, uh, or it has that feeling of this compressed, affected sound. And if we just go to tape mode, love that about sample drums when you do it right there's some like built-in groove and like as the algorithm is falling apart like listen to how these are just ever so slightly stretched apart and you're like are you hearing like that whoa. it's the reverb i think that's uh being sliced apart but that's really groovy there So you got that. But anyway, I want to show you the compressor. This is on max. It'll light up when it's triggered. And this is a compressor that really crushes the front end of the transients and brings out that back end, which is why I wanted to show it to you. So. Um, and what is going to the mod? So let's listen without how much that back end you hear versus with. Sort of the ride bouncing there versus. And much less of the crack of the snare, the thwack. So it's really useful for kind of reconfiguring your groove of your samples. Next, you've got a bunch of different noises from low res and bit rate reduction, which is mostly what you would consider um, in a you're trying to do old-fashioned sampling or just straight up noise we'll listen to a few of the different versions mixes how much of the wet versus dry signal and effect mod is basically sort of just tweaking the tone knob of each of these algorithms bit rate bit crushing i'll turn you up a bit And if we were to put this in pitch mode and turn you into like the advanced algorithm, you almost have it like an 808, especially for to, oops, turn the edge off here, right? Loop. down uh, so that's pretty cool uh, or we can slow it down even more or if we were to go to low res it would just sort of be a little less screws So you got a lot of algorithms to mess with there. You also have these low cut and high cut filters, which will are very characterful as well, kind of the way they were in the old fashioned samplers. Uh, big boost, big resonant boost. Those are the main characterful, colorful tools 
for creating and tweaking your samples in Mimic. Like I said, if you want to check it out, there is the link down below to grab it for, I think, $3 for three months with the code 333. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe for more news. And now for a couple of the advanced tricks that I wanted to show you before we go away. So the first one is um, basically the idea that you notice there's not a lot of, there's not a modulation matrix, for example, in Mimic compared to a lot of other reason samplers uh, out there or reason devices. But if you were to drop this into a combinator, and I can't wait till a combinator two comes out so we can really see this happen, but, no, oh, come on. Essentially, if you drop it into a combinator and make sure it's wired by holding down shift, then you can show the programmer, and this lets you basically um, assign values to some of the controls that weren't otherwise available. Um, or to automate things, you can right click just to edit the automation of any parameter. So, you know, you can have the low cut or high cut automated that way. You could also map them to controls on your keyboard. Uh, and so even though there isn't as many controls as you would hope and a surprising lack of um, onboard matrices, basically you can just go slot by slot and automate any or assign anything you want on the combinator. So like if we're on slot one and we want to, um, you know, do the filter, I don't know, let's just do, because it's really easy to hear. Uh, the effect mix, right? And so that's on rotary one. You see it turning up and down down here. So now if I go. And then I could like plug a, you know, something with CV into this uh, combinator and then that LFO from an external LFO could control multiple components. So that's the first big tip I wanted to give you is like, yeah, there's no mod matrix. The combinator is your mod matrix. You just have to go one menu deep per slot or just right click anything to program it. Uh, that was a big complaint I've seen from people. The second, and I think this is equally uh, worth bearing in mind, is that um, don't be afraid to resample your samples. Uh, there is a little button here, lets you sample your samples and then drop them in again and again, like just degrading them and twisting them in an iterative process can get to really cool, weird sounds uh, that are well worth playing with. Finally, uh, use things the way they're not supposed to be used. You know, if we got this drum beat, but if we put it in vocal mode with fixed pitch, well, who knows what's going to happen? <laughs> You know, drop the formant down. Drop the pitch down. Regular speed. Put it in poly mode. Got loop mode on. Uh, so, that sounds weird. It sounds wonderful. Mess around with it. Uh, you've learned the basics. You've learned a few advanced tips. I hope you found this was helpful. You got any questions or comments along the way, leave them below. Thank you so much for watching.